Hi, and welcome everyone. This is Lavender Sky Panther. Today is Friday, July 16th, 2021, and today's topic is called Curious Sky. It's a collection of images and sky observations happening between July 12th and the 14th, 2021, and this is part two of Show 99 today. Um, there's just so much, there's been so much going on in the skies lately that I can hardly keep up, as I mentioned in the previous show, that I've decided to put these into a part one and part two, both coming out today, so I uh, hope you enjoy them. Now, here's an alternate cover slide. I wasn't sure again which one I wanted to go with, so I put them both in. Now, I'm combining the Welcome and Words, Wisdom, Spirit of the Day pages um, into one again. And this time I have a part one and part two of, of this also. So it seems to be a part one and two theme going on today. Now, uh, before I jump into all of it, I'd like to say good day, osio, how, buongiorno, guten tag, kia ora, jambo, kedu, buenos dias, bonjour, ni hao, cien dobre, konnichiwa, dobro honya, anyo aseo, buotarji, dobri den, aloha winala, kalimera, udenda, and good day. Now, I did pull a couple of cards. On the left is the corn coming from the mystical shaman or shaman oracle deck. And on the right we have... Uh, ap uh, apophyllite or apophyllite, I'm not exactly sure how you say that, it's one of those potato-potato situations maybe, um, and that's coming from, I don't know if I mentioned the Daily Crystal Inspiration Oracle deck. Now that's, me the message on that one is to stay positive, to stay grateful in the moment. Now when we go back over to some meanings on the corn, um, there's some very obvious ones if you do an internet search, but I doubt the credibility of what they're telling you as far as the origins are and how it came to be. So I prefer to look to the Native American uh, stories and, and heritage and oral wisdoms and things of that nature to get to the real stuff. But um, along that vein, I recommend you that you go take a look at ya-native.com or uh, what's the other one here? I wrote it down. Um, uh, native-languages.org. So there's some very interesting information on those sites. Um, for the corn, I'm just going to go with a quote um, that just was rem reminiscent and seemed appropriate to go with that card. Um, All plants are our brothers and sisters. They talk to us, and if we listen, we can hear them. That comes from Arapaho. Now, there is a shift in energies on this uh, shift of energies happening on this planet as we speak. Um, the Earth is kind of shifting from a third dimension heavy density and moving up lighter toward a five or fifth density, if you will, um, as the collective of us all here start to get a little more conscious and evolve a little bit more. And so in that, um, we start to get in touch with some of our spiritual abilities within. They start to become more um, obvious, let's just say. So with this quote, this is, this is relevant because I've just noticed that it is possible to become more telepathic with plants and animals and water and other things. So it's something that uh, all of us possess that ability and it's just a matter of getting more and more in touch with it. So for example, I noticed I have been able to communicate telepathically if I try and I think about it and practice it with animals and with plants. So it's very interesting and I recommend that you try it if you're not already. Anyway, um, another thing related to the corn, or loosely related, I'm looking at the quote from that uh, native-languages.org site, and it, the quote is, the names of several corn dishes also come from Native American languages, Palmini, Pony, and Sakatash from Eastern Algonquian languages, Sagamite or Sagamite from Cree, and Chichi from the Nahuatl or Aztec language. Now, forgive the pronunciations, I don't know if I have them right. Um, anyway, for the corn, I'm not really going to go over the symbolism in the picture itself. I'm going to look at the number 10 and give you some insights there. And I find it uh, funny, though, that we've got the crow flying in. And I did uh, cover the crow with symbolism on, on a card that was pulled a couple of shows ago. So, or the last show, I don't remember. Anyway, have a look there. Um, we're going to look at the positive aspects of the number 10. As in a previous show, I did note to go visit the site Angel Numbers, Joanne Sacred Scribes, if you want to know angel or spiritual meanings to some of these numbers. Now, the positive aspects of number 10 uh, are that one, the one part is new beginnings and the zero is the God force or the zero moment of creation, the blank canvas to create limitless possibilities on, so to speak. That's just my personal insight. Then insights coming from Joanne's Sacred Scribes are step forward in new directions and look to new beginnings with an optimistic and positive attitude as they will prove to be auspicious and beneficial to you in many ways now and in the future. Um, so again, if you have any questions on what numbers might mean, if you're seeing repeating numbers like uh, 1111, 111, 
two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 um, or fives. It's, it's good to go look at her site. She can give you a little more insight on that. All right, let's keep moving. Okay, now on this part two of the Words, Wisdom, Spirit of the Day sheet, um, I was just inspired, you know, I keep thinking for some reason a lot about nature and the four or f uh, five elements. I'm even saying there's other because I'm not convinced that we've been taught the whole story of what's really going on with the world around us and the cosmos beyond. Anyway, uh, related to the elements, I just found this uh, really beautiful quote again on yadashnative.com. This is a message from the Sasquatchy people, and this is by Metakue Oyasin, Standing Elk, Golden Eagle Chief, Chief Black Spotted Horse. Um, it goes like this. Here's the quote. The elemental brothers and sisters are of these essences. They are purity in form. They are single. They are true. They are unpolluted. They understand that they are life keepers. Learn from soil and stone. Learn from river and ocean. Learn from fire and lightning. Learn from wind and breath. They are so close to you that you cannot remember who they are. And yet, not one action that you take could you do without them. These sacred element peoples will restore you. Now, my own little note here at the footnote is, uh, be sure to notice, know, and feel the difference between what is natural in nature versus artificial, man-made tech or caused, especially regarding clouds, sun, fires, lightning, floods, and weather in general. There's a lot of artificial tech going on in their skies, doing all kinds of things. Um, do look at my previous shows and other Earth and Sky watching channels around there to see what's going on, if you're not noticing them for yourself already. Okay, let's get into the sky observation portion of the show, and I'm going to kind of move through this one quickly as well. First off, though, if you are new or returning to this channel, uh, thank you so much for being here. If you are returning, you may want to skip this bit. I'm just going to go over some of the basics of what I'm doing and why and how. So if you're new, you might want to stick around. So I'm just taking pictures around wherever I go and my comings and goings on my daily business. Um, usually this is including the skies over Miami, Florida. And um, I just noticed a lot of strange things happening lately, especially in the last three to five years. And um, even, you know, probably beginning back in 2012, 2014, something like that, started to notice some strange things, but couldn't quite put a finger on it. Something led me strongly in 2018 to really start looking up. And the genesis of all of this show, the whole beginning and impetus of it is uh, there, if you look for it, at my very first show, uh, which shows a triangular imprint in the sky. Just got me curious and wondering what the heck is going on here, because that can't be natural. <laughs> so I take these pictures and I run some enhancements on them, which simply means I edit the attributes of the photos, such as color saturation, brightness, contrast, things of that nature, just to highlight and pop out things of a photo that I suspect are there. Now, when I see say strange cloud activity in quotes in the lower right-hand corner, cloud is referring to plasma clo as cloaking material for what I suspect are cloaking craft going on up there. And um, the plasma, I'm using that as the go-to for the material because it's something heavier and denser than water vapor that uh, lingers in the sky longer and can serve as a good concealing you know, material. Is it that exactly? I don't know. That's just what I'm going to say for now uh, until I know for sure. Now, I'm going to drop in these letters just to keep our focus um, on just kind of highlights of any given photo because there's so much going on in some of these photos and I would never be able to get to them all, you know, to, to point them out. I invite you on your own time on any of these to look on your own leisure. Now, getting back to cloak and craft, when I'm talking about craft, I'm talking about something um, on all of these photos, more often than not, it's going to be extraterrestrial in origin or something in of advanced peoples, let's just say, origin, not something here from Earth. Uh, I say that because the scale and intricacy and complexity complexity of some of these things um, and, you know, how they cloak in and out or, or, you know, arrive in and out of dimension, you know, it just seems to be far past what our current understanding is. Not, It's not to say, though, that it can't have some human involvement or military collaboration. I just think overall, though, it's got to be coming from ET tech. All right, anyway, that said, I'm not going to spend too much time on this scene because this is one of the lesser examples that I have in the show. Um, but... Just at a, at a quick run through, um, I noticed, looked up at the sun, first of all, it felt very artificial. Do look into the concept of solar simulator and the patents pulled in the 1960s, pulled and honored and ungranted. If that uh, concept is new to you, also look at some of my previous shows about it and other Earth and Sky Watching channels. Um, but anyway, that said, um, that struck me right off the bat. And then we look at A, we see like a stick-like object come in here, very pronounced. Uh, we just see this overall thing looks like the tracing, the outline of a teardrop shape. 
Um, weird things happening at B and C, but for right now, I'm just going to focus on the right-hand side. Everything looks choppy and fuzzy, too. I call that staccato cloud or movement. Excuse me one second. Okay, this bound back. Staccato cloud and movement. Sorry, my voice is shot today. I've been trying to record a couple of shows so many times. It just hasn't been clicking. Anyway, um, and this staccato movement, I call it that because to me, that means there's a local, you know, a localized craft sitting there that's generating waves causing the disturbance in the atmosphere around it, uh, whether it's electromagnetic wave activity or, you know, so there, some other kind of frequencies, or it's a bigger craft up, a, up where we can't see it veiled in the sky that's sending down you know, energy waves doing that same thing, same principle. Um, anyway, that's all I kind of really want to say about these slides because I want to get to better examples. But we'll zoom in on this object and we just see that this thing seems darker in density and it looks like there's cloud or, you know, plasma material wafting in front of it. Artificial cloud, that would be anyway. Looks like we have a triangular shape here. We have a weird crescent here. This is staying dark and true as a very clear symmetrical form that looks man-made. Or, I mean, when I say man-made, sorry. I mean advanced ET tech, whatever. Or it's just the edge of a bigger shape that has like a trapezoidal form or whatnot. Whatever the case, there's just a lot of, as they say, high strangeness going on in here. Oh, sorry, this A over here is just a remnant of um, a previous slide when I was editing. Okay, now we're going to look at strange cloud activity, a panorama. We're looking north uh, to east to the right of the photo, north to the west, I mean to the left. The bottom is the original. The top is within some enhancement. We get some red pink color signature happening starting to do look at the description box below of what could be that that could be and what's causing it. We get this weird form, you know, look at this. This is in no way, shape, or form literally of any natural cloud systems. Uh, let's look at this though and some different views and angles and breaking it up a bit. So uh, we're looking at this one portion of it. Let's keep going. You know, we get that red pink signature. What is all of this? This is not natural cloud. It's very choppy and fuzzy, staccato like as I call it. You know, we've got a, a straight edge here, you know, a curve here, like a crescent. Um, this looks like the hull or the bow of ship at the front, you know, with some weird stuff happening around it. Uh, I have more questions than answers on this one, but this is pretty clear. This looks like a, like a fish, like a goldfish, if that were the head, and the, these, the, these trails of things happening behind it. So I'm going to say that's a standalone craft cloaking. Just a lot of weird stuff happening here, and also how low in the atmosphere that was. Okay, then we have A and B, and this is all fuzzy and grainy because it's late at night and the best my camera could do. But this overall thing had a red-pink glow, and it was not coming from the west. We're looking now to the east. Uh, there's no possible way there could have been any reflection of it coming in there. So this, to me, is something local generating that color. But what struck me was these whiter areas. So we look to the right, and even though I couldn't, it's still pretty grainy. It, you know, something is moving and happening in here that is artificial. Uh, so I'm going to call that cloaking craft. All right, then we get to this scene looking west-southwest, and um, look at the shape. That's a pure shape with a very straight edge. Um, you know, this is coming down on angle. This is a standalone triangle. You know, what the heck is going on in here? We're going to see more in the enhanced version. Wow, look at this. Bam. Red-pink signature. Again, look at the description box below. Dark triangle with cloaking material kind of wafting in front of it. Strange form. Okay, looks symmetrical, though, like a leg and a leg in the top of this thing. Uh, lots of strange things. It's popping out with density. You know, this has a hole to it. This has its own shape, a pointed ellipse. See what you see in there, though. All right, we're going to just take some more views of this to the right. I'm focusing here on we've got like an X pattern as pure white stuff as chemtrail. I don't know who, who created it. If it was um, ET or if that was human military made, that's possible. Uh, we've got a darker form here. You know, this is a very clear form holding true behind all of this stuff. Uh, see what you think is going on in there. Look more on your own time. You'll find more things the more you look. This is starting to be strange. This is still that chemtrail fanning out. Um, let's look at this with some enhancement. We get that red-pink signature. We even get now a gold-green one and something else rust-colored happening over here that looks like it has intelligent design, like a membrane and two holes on the sides or indentations. Um, you know, just a lot of strangeness happening in here again. You know, weird forms doing their own thing. You know, edge, you know, clean, straight edge, straight edge, little things independent, you know, what's going on in here? Okay, now this scene gets really interesting. So to the naked eye, you see a very straight edge. It's looked like you could take a ruler and draw a line off of it. Straight, straight. Here's the top of another triangle. Here's a weird tracing. Looks like phantom-like. Maybe that's an interdimensional craft coming or going in the foreground. I don't know. Let's look at this with enhancement. We've got red pinks. 
red, pinks, you know, different color signatures all over the place. This looks like something else is emerging. It's got a whiter signature, like a white, you know, um, white, little bit bluish thing coming out here when everything else is warm. Um, here we see this tracing, this outline of this thing, very ghost-like. So I think 8.1 is an interdimensional craft, and I think this is something else. I don't know if this is a portal opening up with things flying, coming, and going, or if this is just another way something is cloaking, uh, like that's the craft. Uh, I don't know. See what you think. All right, this gets really weird, too, looking west-southwest. This is on July 13th, uh, a little bit after 8 p.m., uh, we got a weird shape floating off on its own lonesome in the front here. we got weird streaks doing their own thing, different color signatures all over the place. And here we go with enhancement. We have like a roundish thing. You know, these look like distinct individual objects, as does this. Um, these two things, too, you know, kind of doing their own thing. What is all of this stuff? I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell you. Um, C.1 looks like an object on its own, kind of going, moving through because it's whiter in signature. And like I say, whenever you see something either crystalline and bright white or a little more white than everything else beyond it, uh, whether it's grayscale or a color, that tells me that's intelligent design happening there, whether it's an object or a craft or something else. Um, here we get this really brilliant, vibrant, you know, red, orange, yellow um, signature. Again, look at the description box below to what the, could be causing that. Got something weird here trailing in some linear form with a spherical one all in one place. What the heck? This also looks like a craft kind of perched on the, um, the profile of this thing. Okay, now we're going to look at the overall scene. This is a little bit of a panorama. So the, um, sorry, let me see. The south is to the left and the north is to the right. This one looks interesting because not only did we cover what we were just looking at, it looks like an object emerging here. But we also see this movement, and I really look at movement too, uh, in addition to everything else, shapes, patterns, forms, energy, color signatures, all of it. Look at B. So this really strikes me. We've got a point. This looks like um, could be a force field or energy field out in front of it. Let's look at this with enhancement, and look at that thing. B is really solid, and we've got other kind of more, um, you know, wafting plasma material all around it, whatever. Is this part of like a bigger thing? where my cursor is going? Is that one bigger craft? I don't know. Or are these little bits and pieces of something else? It has a very straight edge with holes at the end of it. I'm not sure what's happening there. Again, this is one of those image you could, images where you could look forever and keep finding more and more things. Little triangle over here, etc. Uh, I'll leave this to you on your own time to have some fun with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alright, here's another kind of looking at the similar um, Similar, I mean, same area of the sky, just kind of looking at it up close and personal here. This gets extremely interesting. Pay close attention to H and J. Um, so let's jump ahead to the uh, enhancement on it. Look at H.1. This is a curve, curve, you know, concave, concave, concave. Another one here. So this is a symmetrical form. It looks like it has a crater in it or some kind of divot or a well. Um, that is an object with intelligent design. There's no other way that could be, no, no other thing it could be. And then here it looks like we're looking at the ends of two tubes, you know, like a little little tunnels, you know, and it's like got two prongs on it. So that looks like of an intelligent design too to me. Got something weird here, which looks symmetrical, has a straight line. Weird thing here, looks like a trail, like it's coming in this way. What the heck is this chunky thing, this cylindrical thing at D.1? Then we get these things, we get this, you know. Uh, we got this in vibrant signature down here, which is very different up here in character. What the heck is 8.1? So many questions on this. Uh, see what you find in here, but like again, you could look endlessly. This looks like the end of the pipe. This looks like a right, you know, um, right angled thing <laughs> with design to it. See what you find. We're going to zoom in one more time. Excuse me, again, my voice is shot today. Um, but H.2, um, we see that form. It's a little less clear, but J.2 starts to look interesting. So again, Looks very structured, looks symmetrical, looks like intelligent design. Um, have fun, have at it, see what you see in this whole thing. All right, now, this is looking south, and this looked just really weird because it had its own color signature, which was different from everything around it, and it started to have like patterns in it. So we looked to the right and with enhancement. Look at this, it looks like some big like fireball zoomed down, like with a trail, you know, behind it. But not a fire, a fireball, just like a cosmic light ball. So this is like, uh, to me, some type of craft, self-illuminating, uh, generating its own signature. Um, hang on one second. Okay, and then it looks like it has like all these little craft, you know, coming, coming or going or just traveling companion with it. I don't know what's going on. I don't even know what this thing is. It's starting to look really weird too. 
Um, so is this like a form of like a mini sun with craft that come and go out of it, like a portal, or is it an object? I don't know, but it's definitely something with intelligence that can create its own energy signature with a distinct form with things that look like craft flying, you know, right next to it. That's all I'll say. <laughs> all right, this gets really weird. This is either um, in the foreground of this or they're together, I couldn't tell, but nonetheless strange because you don't have something of this shape, like a like an hourglass, you know, rising straight up out of the sky. And so this is with enhancement, it gets really interesting. So we get this red signature and then it goes into yellows and oranges with these weird bits coming out of it. It's just really bizarre. I didn't expect this actually with the enhancements. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. I don't can't tell you exactly what it is. But here we go to that A element. Is it just reaching up and coincidentally kind of in front of this overall, more horizontal, loping artificial cloud or is this like directly connected up into it? I, again, I can't tell, but this gets real interesting with enhancement. And here we go. So what the heck is that? That is not a natural cloud form. No way. Uh, that looks like there are other objects maybe, you know, floating around in here. Let's see what you think is happening. All right, now we're going to look at that, like, color ball thing um, a little bit later, I think. Um, but here we go. It's getting a little more defined. Little things yet more more defined and yet also not. <laughs> so in this view, this is looking more egg-like with something attached onto it. And this is looking more uh, triangular in form-like. I don't know what this thing is at B.1. The whole thing is strange. Is this part of a like massive, massive craft? Or is this a standalone grouping of whatever it is on its own? I don't know. But look at this streak here now happening at the bottom. We're going to blow back out and look at this overall scene. So we were looking just at a piece of this whole thing. What are these things happening? And look at that overall color signature. And these grooves with a different shape. It looks like things are popping out with dimension to them. That could be a hole in a sphere. Uh, all of this stuff, highly bizarre, but looks somehow intelligently designed. All right, now this photo gets interesting at A. I'm only going to focus on A for now, but here's for context, the bigger scene, which is also strange. We've got straight, straight lines, this diving downward, these doing their own thing. I, you know, I, I can't even begin with this. So let's just focus on A.1 and zoom in. We've got A.2, this weird little shape, you know, looks like a triangle with two prongs coming off of it. Uh, diving downward. What the heck is that? You know, it looks intelligently designed, and yet, what the heck is it doing? I, I can't tell you. I don't know. See what you think. And look what it's going toward or in the front of. You know, look at this thing. You know, look at all the texture and structure, and looks like, you know, round hole here and a semicircular thing or circle here. Really, really bizarre. I'm saying something is definitely cloaking in there. All right, this gets really weird. We get these gray tracings. To me, that's a form of cloak and we're only seeing partial of whatever this is. This might even be a part of it in the front, or this could be separate, I don't know. Or this could be separate objects that just happen to be traveling in an overall form to try to throw people <laughs> from figuring out what it is, I don't know. And down here, all kinds of strangeness is happening at the profile again of this artificial mass, I can't even call it a cloud. And we get weird things like this straying into the picture. So let's look with an enhancement. We see again a lot of high strangeness down here, as they say. Uh, this looks like uh, two triangles or one, you know, riding on something like a sleigh <laughs> that's curved up. This looks like a triangle. I don't know what this is. Is this zooming down this way like somebody laid down a cross shape or a T? Or is this like a little landing pad and you get something shooting out of it? Actually, I think this is an overall craft and there's something docking at the bottom. And this looks like a port where something's just shooting out of it. With it. Look at that. I don't know. This is starting to form a triangle. Uh, just it's just so strange, you know. What do you what do you do with this? This is how I took it. This is a picture in the sky. This was here. You could see it with the naked eye, um, and that is so different than any other quote unquote cloud happening. And we know all of this is artificial, and looks like has trails of craft like coming down. Let's look at this with enhancement. Look at this. Looks like objects with trails coming in behind them, like they're coming and going out of the perimeter of this artificial cloud, which I highly suspect has some big craft in there. Then we have like a crescent shape, or is that the end of a tube? Hard to say, uh, with stuff happening. You know, something else is coming or going back here in cloak. Um, see what you think is going on in there. It's a big mystery to me. I'm just going to kind of go fast through this one because I still don't know what that is. It's very interesting, though, as it starts to deteriorate over time or come and go over time. Okay, here's that form again over at A and B and C. We're just going to look at this overall scene with enhancement. We get this weird stuff. Looks like a cloak, like a very skinny cylindrical tubes here. Looks like it has a vapor trailing behind it. Like that's an object. That's an object. This one's popping up this way. 
Is that an end of the tube coming out of some cloak and craft or a standalone cylinder? I don't know. Look at this. Still have no answers on A and B. See what you think. All right, this gets interesting too. A and B look like companion or sister or brother um, shapes because they're on the same angle and they have the same bulbous pointed ellipse uh, shape and texture or patterning to them. So I think these are cloak and craft. See what you think. All right, well, this is the photo of the day in the close of the show. It's an av avocado on a tree and a really low hanging branch. It's also known as alligator pear, but I've never heard that used on the street in Miami, Florida. Um, but I just want to say thank you for hanging around here a while. I really, really appreciate your being here. Hope you've had fun on the show. I um, hope you're out there looking and having even more fun seeing what you see out in the world around you. So for now, have a gorgeous now, gorgeous day or evening wherever you are, and tremendous peace and love to you. Lavender Sky Panther, bye.